Welcome to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we bring in entrepreneurs who have created online businesses and improved their lifestyles. Here's your host, Rohit Malhotra. Hi everyone, I'm Rohit from LifeSelfMastery.com and today I'm excited to have Taylor Jacobson, who's the founder of FocusMates, which is a digital workplace that optimizes remote work productivity via peer accountability. Taylor is an alumni of Duke University. Welcome to the show, Taylor. Thanks for having me, Rohit. Awesome. So, so you know, can you share your journey, what made you, uh, uh, you know, get into entrepreneurship and, and start focus means? Yeah, so really the big moment happened. Uh, actually, I was living in India, in Mumbai, and I started working remotely for the first time. And my whole life, I've been a top performer. And suddenly, overnight, I really turned into a procrastinator. And I very nearly got fired from my job, actually. I had such a hard time um, getting, just getting things done working from home. Um, and I did not solve that problem immediately. But what happened was I, you could say, I, I suffered enough that I developed a real appreciation for how difficult it can be to get things done by yourself. And, um, and as I was in that um, really a, a dark place, I, I was quite ashamed for a while and I, I was somewhat depressed for some time as I was kind of grappling with um, this f- professional failure, um, really the biggest one I'd had so far. Um, it really motivated me to, to start, more deeply studying um, self-improvement. And so I was reading about, you know, personal development and behavioral science and and all these things. And and that eventually started to help. Um, But fast forward many years, actually, uh, and I'm working as an executive coach. And I was talking to one of my clients who was working from home, also a procrastinator. And uh, he was freaking out about a deadline for an investor pitch coming up just a couple weeks away and had put it off. And we were just brainstorming what we could do that would work for him. And um, so I just started thinking about what would work for me. Um, You know, like what do I wish I had all that time ago when I was really struggling on my own. And so what I suggested to him was that we just um, get on a video call together and I would just sit there with him while he worked on writing his investor presentation. And it happened that I had been procrastinating this blog post for at least several months. So I said, you know, what? I'll, I'll work on my blog post while you work on this investor presentation and we'll just keep each other company. And um, so we set up a time we got on to, it was Skype at the time. And we started by sharing with each other exactly what we were going to work on. We both wrote down, exactly what we were going to work on. And then we just got to work. And that appointment, it was two hours. It just flew by and both of us were completely in the zone, super productive. And very immediately, both of us realized that we had sort of stumbled onto this interaction that was like magically effective for both of us. And that almost a hundred percent other people could benefit from something like that. So that was, that was the kernel of it. Um, you know, the, the bigger picture, there's obviously like massive trends happening that, that make procrastination an even more acute problem now between the fact that we're just like ridiculously distracted by our, our, our phones and, you know, there's Netflix and you can, you know, order anything on demand, like whatever, um, your, your vices, but we're all really distracted. Um, and, um, of course we're doing a lot more of our work alone now as well. So like remote work is, is really coming into the mainstream. And, and also if you look at the education sector, um, a lot more education is happening, um, alone where you're taking an online course on Coursera or something in order to get a raise or something, but you have to do it by yourself if you want to take advantage of that. And most people really struggle to, to follow through with that. So it, it, that was the kernel, but then it started to really become apparent how much um, people needed some solution that could just help hold their feet to the fire in this sort of increasingly isolated world. 
No, absolutely. I, I, I totally love the idea. Um, uh, you know, why do you think workplace is getting more isolated and distracted? Is it only because of the millennials or uh, or do you think uh, it's, it's even for the Gen Zs and the Gen X? You know, I don't think it's a generational thing. I think it's just a human thing. Um, like, you know, we're, we evolved in a tribal environment, right? We've only spent the last, like call it 1% of human evolution in sort of modern connected civilization. Um, and in a tribal environment, you're, everything is geared towards survival and you can't survive without cooperating with one another. You can't eat. You have to, you have to cooperate in order to hunt. You can't raise a child. You have to cooperate. You know, you can't like leave your baby and go do something else like you can with a baby monitor. You need to rely on other people. Um, so we're very wired toward survival related objectives. And you can imagine like if you really want to eat, you're going to be highly motivated to like go and participate in that hunt. Um, versus today you're like, you're working on like your five-year plan or something, or you're trying to, you know, you're, you're going to present your PhD to the committee in like four years when you finish writing it or whatever. And, and um, so we're, we're really not wired to deliver on these sort of complex long-term objectives. Um, and then meanwhile, we introduce into our environment just a ridiculous amount of stimuli, right? So like, our, our cell phones is a quintessential example. We're just, we're not, we're wired to respond to uh, stimuli as like potential threats to our survival, right? If you put everything through that filter of like, is this going to affect my survival? Um, we're wired to pay attention to any sort of like things happening in our environment. So now that we have like, complete access and people have complete access to us. It just means that we're like hyper bombarded by stimuli that we really are not able to effectively filter out. So it's that kind of combination of um, the kind of stuff that we work on. We're really not wired to work on such complex long-term stuff. And then we're also not equipped to handle the level of distraction and stimulus that we have in our environment. Okay, so uh, so focus me, uh, you know, focuses on peer accountability to to make sure that you know uh, uh, it, it optimizes remote work productivity. So um, so so uh, how how do you uh, uh, you know how do you uh, make sure that you know uh, there's an accountability with another person? Do you uh, how do you uh, make sure that you pair with the right person so that uh, there's the right sort of accountability? Yeah, so. So just take a step back and share a little bit how it works. Um, focus, the, the core of the focus made experience is, uh, is an appointment with a peer accountability partner uh, or focus, a focus made session. And today there's actually only one format. It's a 50 minute appointment and you begin, so you, you can schedule a focus made appointment anytime. You don't have to coordinate with anyone. We handle the logistics of coordinating or matching you with somebody who also wants to work at that time. Um, you begin the appointment by you greet your partner and you share what you're going to work on. He or she shares what they're going to work on. You write it down and you get to work. And at the end of the 50 minutes, you take another brief moment to talk, talk with each other about how it went um, and sort of have this shared moment of reflection and celebration. And at every stage in that process, there's actually research about why doing that makes you more productive. So committing to something ahead of time is called pre-commitment. That's, uh, that's highly effective. Um, setting intentions, being specific about them, um, uh, sharing them with somebody, writing them down, all of those things um, increase effic uh, efficacy, productivity. Um, doing a task with somebody else present increases productivity. And then actually even reflection increases productivity. We tend to um, skew towards doing more what's called executive tasks and fewer reflective tasks. Ex ex executive tasks is just like doing things versus thinking about things or planning things. Um, it feels a lot better to do, to, to just do stuff, but actually reflecting um, and planning 
right? Like, oh, I, you know, I, I actually, I shouldn't have worked on that. What I should have done is this instead. Taking that moment to create that little awareness is something that you can then act on and will make you a lot more productive because you're going to make a better choice about what to do in the future. Um, so there's kind of this huge cascade of things baked into the focus made experience that all make you more productive. Bottom line, it's, it's very, very effective. Um, you asked about the partner, um, what we're working toward is a really deeply customized experience where you're working with the people you want to work with, the people that are the right partners for you. And so, um, you know, what that can look like is here's my favorite partners. Here's partners that I would rather not work with. It could look like, you know what, I'm part of, you know, I'm like, I'm part of the life self mastery community. And I'd like to work with other people who are part of that community because they're awesome. Um, today, we have a very sort of uh, 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 MVP of that and we're, and we're working towards making it more and more personalized over time. Okay. Uh, uh, makes sense. Uh, you know, I, I was uh, looking at, uh, you know, the kind of, um, you know, uh, about your target markets and uh, you, you try to target freelancers, remote workers, uh, you know, online education and corporate training. Uh, uh, yeah, how, how big of a market is there for freelancers and remote workers? Is it, is it really 50% uh, of, of the employee force who, who would be freelancers? Or is it, uh, you know, uh, it's still a very small market where you assume a couple of years it's going to be a much, much larger from, from, uh, from where it is right now? It's a good question. <clears throat> I, in my opinion, the, the data is a little bit, you know, is a little bit hard and, and the different sources say different numbers, but what's very clear from all of the different sources is that um, independent work is a huge thing that's happening now. Um, and it's likely in excess of a hundred million people that are working like this already and it's continuing to grow. Um, and, and then like you alluded to, it's not just, uh, it's not just freelancers. Um, it's also, you know, you may have a job, but you might have, like you, you might have a side hustle where you're working on something else and you need to do that on the weekend, but you're tired and you, you know, there's other things pulling at your time. And so like focus mate is also a tool for those, uh, side hustlers who want to like hold their own feet to the fire to work on something else that's important. Or I mentioned um, online education where, um, again, just massive number of people that are customers of businesses like Coursera or Udemy, Udacity. These are all, you know, multi-million person platforms that are selling online courses. But of course, the problem is that people really struggle to follow through and complete those courses. So those are just a few of the the sizable markets. And then um, I don't know if we hit on it already, but remote work, um, not independent workers, just people that are, you know, they're, they're, their company might be based in San Francisco, but they live in Oklahoma um, because, you know, that's where their parents are or whatever. Um, and, and that is increasingly common as well. The, the competition for good talent is just driving companies to say, you know what, people want to have this flexibility. So we got to figure out a way to make, remote work possible. And so uh, we're also addressing that market where we're going to these companies and saying, you know, we know you're scared to hire people remotely or allow your employees to be remote. Here's a way that you can help them do their jobs well and stay connected with each other also, even though they're all over the world. No, you, uh, you're right. In fact, um, uh, you know, Buffer and Basecamp are, are some of, uh, uh, you know, fully remote companies, which are like one, some of my favorite companies. Uh, but you also had Yahoo, which uh, over the years had, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they had a program with Melissa, when she, she joined as a CEO, she asked, uh, you know, the remote workers to, to you know, to, uh, and she stopped the remote working culture and she asked the employees to come back and, you know, sit at one place and uh, try to do, do the job. So maybe, maybe focus made is, is the answer to it. Uh, but, That's plan. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, but I, I'm interested to know how, how did you uh, get more opt-ins for, uh, and what, what is the strategy to get more customers on board? Uh, are you, uh, 
uh, you know, do you, uh, do you put a lot of money into paid advertisements or is it, or is it more word of mouth? Yeah, it's, it's the latter. Um, we are fortunate to have like ravenously uh, excited customers. And so in very simple terms, our acquisition strategy is about empowering our existing user base to just be even better evangelists for us to make it more worth their while, to make it faster, easier, um, to continue to spread the word about Focusmate. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, what is, what is your revenue model? Uh, is it a SaaS platform? Um, yes. Uh, I will say that for us, pricing strategy is, is actually a, sort of a, a complex problem that we're thinking about hard. Um, but at the core of it, it will be a SaaS, you know, subscription based software, uh, service. Okay. And, and what would be the charges, uh, you know, somebody wants to become a premium member of, of Focusmate? Um, well today Focusmate is completely free, so there is no charge. Um, okay. so that's, that's basically the answer. We will be introducing, uh, premium offerings, um, a few of them. Um, so I won't go into the specifics of what and when, um, but the idea is certainly to just keep providing more value and to offer paid services that are aligned with offering more value. Okay. And, uh, you know, you, uh, uh, you've raised a, uh, you know, fund ground on Republic and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested in how did you get, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, investors like Ne Real and uh, you know some of the other uh, VC firms like uh, uh, Tower V Ventures and others to invest into the company and and what is and you know and what are you going to use the money for? Yeah, I'm I'm glad you brought it up. Um, my strategy has really been like it actually starts from building a business is hard and you know we need help and the best help is from people who are experts, people have done it before. Um, and so just taking the example of Nier Eyal, uh, Nier is, is considered by some to be the world's leading product design expert. And um, once I read his book, it became obvious to me that he, he could be a really valuable resource for us, especially because he's actually, he's, he's now really focused on distractions and how do we overcome them? So um, a lot of common interests. So, you know, I, I had one common contact. I, uh, I asked if they would be willing to introduce us and, and really just worked on building a, a meaningful long-term relationship with Nier. And at some point it became uh, kind of the right moment to ask if he was interested in investing. And he said, yes. Um, and, but that was really just kind of a one moment in a relationship that's now been several years. And, and uh, I think, I hope mutually mutually valuable. So that's, that's always been the strategy is it starts from, you know, building real relationships, focusing on uh, the relationship and, you know, doing it from, because we want to be successful. We want to win. And it's hard, you know, this is a, it's a tough mountain to climb. Um, as far as, you know, what are we using the money for? Um, most of our budget is, uh, is toward product. Um, I would say that we are a product centric culture. Um, and you know, like you asked about our, our use, our marketing strategy, um, you know, having great word of mouth and, and rapid user growth can really stem from having a product that people love. So that's kind of at the core of how we do most things. Okay. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, who, who are your current investors and, uh, you know, how, how big is your team uh, 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 and are you, are you the only founder in the company? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I won't list our, all of our investors. Um, <laughs> well now, now, you know, we've just taken on 300 something new investors from Republic. So we have quite an extended family of, of, uh, of people on, on the focus mate family. Um, but, um, yes, near all is one of our investors alongside, um, co-venture beta works, tower view ventures, or some of the sort of better known investors. Um, and you asked me another question as well, which I am forgetting. Yeah, how how big is the team, and you know, uh, yes. how many people are there? 
Yeah, so um, sort of true to the idea of this being the era of independent work, um, there's only two of us full time. Um, we're hiring our third team member, and then we have a cadre of, of contractors, freelancers, part timers. Um, so probably all told, there's 10 people involved, but um, fortunately, there's great ways to um, sort of be flexible and, and pull in uh, expertise without um, having to hire people full time. Okay, um, so let's quickly do the top three. Uh, what's what's your favorite business book? So, my favorite business book that I have read in the last year is called "Good Strategy, Bad Strategy." Um, before reading it, I was really uh, I was I was feeling the crunch of like we have to get a lot done in a short amount of time, and we need to focus and good strategy, bad strategy really gets to the heart of how do you decide what to focus on and why. And I think it's a strategy is a very rarely and poorly understood thing that creates a massive amount of leverage. So that was incredibly valuable and incredibly worth reading from start to finish. Um, and then I'll just throw in one second book recommendation that's a little bit more fun. I just read something, a book called Living with a Seal, which is about this uh, entrepreneur who invites a Navy SEAL to live with him for 30 days to train him. And it's, uh, it's, it's a story about accountability because having a Navy SEAL live with you is a very high form of accountability, but it's also just really, really funny and really well told and inspiring yeah. also. Yeah, yeah, I, I've loved that that book. I'm going to, you know, put it in the show notes. Um, you know, if you could go back in time when you started Focusmates, uh, what is the one thing you would have focused on or anything you would have done differently? The truth is, I there's not a lot I would have done differently. Um, but I think one thing I would pay more attention to is um, a lot of people want to give you advice. And relatively fewer people want to roll up their sleeves and just do grunt work and, um, and cultivating just, you know, honesty with people about, Hey, here's what we need. We need somebody who wants to just wade through the, you know, get in the trench, wade through the muck with us and just get this done. Um, I think that's really, um, I did not fully appreciate the importance of, of making that distinction um, early on. Okay. Um, and what's your favorite online tool, for example, uh, Gmail, Slack, uh, LinkedIn? Yep. I use and love all of those. Um, the one that I will share is called Workflowy, which I use for task management and also for goal setting. Um, it is it, it's sort of infinitely expandable and collapsible without having to like navigate to different screens, which I find really helpful. Um, and it also has very instantaneous filters that allow you to look at different views of things, um, very quickly. So, um, workflowy. Okay. And, uh, and you know, how can people reach out to you and uh, how can they uh, get to know more about Focusmate? Yeah, you can join us. Um, our website is Focusmate. Dot com. It's free to join. Um, and if you do sign up, um, would love to get your feedback and hear your thoughts on how we can do even better. Uh, uh, right, Taylor, I've, uh, you know, uh, signed up to focus mates and, uh, since I, uh, run, uh, my podcast inside us, I'm going to use it, uh, to, to get a more productive about it. So, um, thank you very much for coming on to the show and really appreciate speaking to, uh, to the listeners. Thanks very much for having me, Rohit. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for listening to the Life Self Mastery Podcast, where we teach you how to start and grow your online business. For more information, visit Rohit's blog at www.lifeselfmastery.com.